And we are live. Hello, hello. Let me know how the volumes are, people. Welcome, everybody. This is Odd One Gaming, and this is going to be a Raid Shadow Legends live stream. If you're watching this later, it means, well, I was live with some people doing an account takeover. So if I'm not going to be able to answer to you, it's because the live stream is already over. Andre, Snipes, Matthew, Joseph, Buho, Mushtabas, Manny, Z Lightning, Bambi. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Now, this, this is nice. Start to stream and boom. There's a ton of you already here, and I really appreciate each and every one of you. How is your day going? Ben Russell, hello as well. Welcome. So, today's going to be just like a, just a quick stream. I'm doing an account takeover for Hitman PR, building him a clan boss, a Demon Lord clan boss team, and... Yeah, I'm not gonna go too crazy that my usual time is three hours. I had a really early start this morning, like the earliest that, than ever. So from now on also my my uh, stream times are gonna change. I'm gonna always do Wednesdays at this time. So even though this time is gonna be uh, this time around, it's a bit of a shorter one, which well, it's still gonna be at least an hour for the account takeover, but Wednesdays from now on, I will be streaming at this time. Friday, I'm going to keep the same time at night. Quite possibly, I'm going to move it over here on YouTube as well. But this, the time for Wednesday changes to now. This boss needs to drive faster. Old one is live. Ah, <laughs> appreciate you, Bambi. Doug Usama, hello. Alucard, thank you for the subscription. Welcome, welcome. Can't wait to see what manic you work on. I'm all eyes. Okay, that's perfect. I'm glad. I, fe I feel like this type of things, like count takeovers, is what people really enjoy and like. So, if I don't have other stuff to do on my Wednesdays, at least, because Friday we usually do sharples. This is the type of fun stuff that we can do. So, you know, why not? Some takeovers of me building some stuff. And of course, today's the day I forgot my headphones at home. Oh, God. Well, you, you just have to be that guy slash girl, Bambi. That plays the, that plays it on stream, you know, the, not on stream, that plays it loud on speaker. You got Nekmo yesterday, nice. Nice, Matthew, congrats, that's amazing. Hold on, I'm Hitman Pro, okay, Edgardo, hello, hello. How are you doing? Here's the resources as needed. Okay, so, like I said, I'm going to show you what I'm building and all that, so if you're going to be around, Edgardo, and have any questions, feel free to ask me and I'm going to answer answer to you so basically like just to clarify a little bit Edgardo uh, acquired purchase let's say a account takeover service from me and he also uh, asked to you know do a coaching as well normally I do my account takeovers off streams it's faster it doesn't take as long but if anybody's ever interested like I can do it like that or I can do like uh, Edgardo aka Hitman did and he said you know what I need some coaching as well by uh, what I mean by that is I will be building it on stream so you can see the process. If you're around, you can ask questions and, you know, all the time is dedicated to you. So keep in mind, if you're ever interested, join my Discord. The Discord should be in, in the description of this video. Pin comment. You always need find the details there. So feel free to join and ask any question, any area of the game you're struggling. I'm here for you. Martin Brown. Hello. Hello, Joseph. Hey, Aron, what speed would uh, Mark need to be in Crisk's slow tune when he's a 191? I mean, if you have the link itself on, on the website, you should see there what... You should see there, like, what slot you're you're replacing. Like, if Mark replaces somebody like a Brogni, then that, that's where the Mark goes. Basically, just look on, the, on that link and see what's the last person that goes before the stun, if you're trying to block the stun, or before the... Sec before the second day we so you can block the debuff you know daniel johnson hello hello okay so the team that we will be building today for hitman is going to be a deacon forever we've been looking around trying to see what champions we can free up and all that but because of the gear not being the at the highest level the safest one which i thought is going to be able to do a one kill which a nightmare was the Deacon Forever. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to replace, remove this one here. And let's put the champions in there. So what the Deacon Forever consists of is Deacon Arm Shockers. That's where the name comes from. Then there's uh, two block damage champions, which from which one of them has to be on a two turn cooldown or even unkillable on a four turn. So it can be Helicath, it can be Alsko, Roche card, 
uh, well, Sir Nicholas and now even Emic. So in our case, we're going to use Helicath and we're going to use Warcaster. But I don't want to put them first in the turn orders just for the sake of the stun targeting, even though we're going to build a variation with Doom Priest that makes it easier to uh, make it affinity friendly. Because unlike the Bat Eater, the, you know, the Batman Forever or the Deacon Forever, which you're building, has a little bit of a problem when it comes to stun targeting and affinity. Because you take the decreased PD buff, you take the stun if you don't blink a block debuff champ. Whereas in the other one, the Bat Eater, both the Manitors bring unkillable and block debuffs. So that one's a little bit better because of that. While this one, well, you either need to bring a Doom Priest or you need to bring a block debuff champ. But it can be tricky with timing. So... Bringing a Doom Priest makes it 10 times better. He also has a, uh, what's her name? To Hanorak that hits harder, but we prefer not use to Hanorak as she's better in Hydro or other areas. <clears throat> Did any other content creator confirm if Amic bug is reported? What bug are you talking about, Lou? Ubix Ayub, I hope I read your name uh, well. Hello, hello. Would Gurta be good in Hydra with Tronda? Alex D, that should work because Gurtak, Gurtak's passive basically brings more damage. Like him putting those block buffs and the poisons on Tronda is going to boost Tronda's damage. So it can work. But at the end of the day, see what you sacrifice, you know? See what you have to sacrifice in order to get that. Martin Brown, hello, hello. What's up? Welcome. Sepulchre Sentinel is a Krisk, uh, is in a Krisk 4-3, but Mark has a one-third cooldown over Sepulchre. I mean, if you have the link, if you have the link that you can share with Joseph, we can have a look at it. You get Emic, but you didn't find any one key comp. Who else do you have, Doke? Who else do you have? Do you have any other block damage or unkillable champion? And if you do, you can, like, if you have a Warcast or something like this, you can do this team. So now let me just build this team. Let me double check with, in my conversation, what champions did I say we're going to be building? Oh, yeah. So because this team has a decreased defense from uh, Deacon, it has the weekend from Helicath, I was thinking this could be a good team to use Ronda in because he has Ronda booked, he has a uh, Ronda Masteried, and I don't think Ronda has any other uses unless you get to the end game or like some Doom Tower funky stuff where you need her to do the this one the block debuff so we can just build round line there and with a ton of master with a ton of damage i'm gonna need to reset our masteries though so please do let me know by the way guys how's the quality how does it look because uh people told me last time i did the stream on youtube that it was a little bit blurry i changed a little bit my settings and any feedback is welcome like is it too blurry does it look okay because i could see because i think my camera is set pretty fine I'm good, thank you, no more Twitch. I mean, I'm doing Fridays on Twitch still, but I might change Ubix because I get better viewership here. And like I mentioned in my previous live stream, I want when I'm doing my Twitch stream, I don't do them as often, I want to be able to interact with as many people as possible. So if there's more people on YouTube, I'm just going to stream on YouTube, you know? Because like on Twitch, I get maybe an average of 30, 40, 50 people. Here, well, last time I had 100 people. So if I'm going to have 100 people average, I'm going to stream on YouTube more. You know, it, it just makes sense to me because that's the time when I interact with people. Quality is great. Okay, perfect. So far, so good. <clears throat> so many teams have Doom Priest and still miss her. Yeah, it's her. It's a her Buhog, Buhog pad. But yeah, so that's the team that I'm thinking to use because everybody else can have some uses in the game. You know, Brogni could be some other stuff. Gnut can be used in other areas and... I'm thinking this would be the best one and obviously it's going to be a little bit it's going to depend on the damage that we will do uh, depending on the gear but this should be really close if not easily a wonky you're not noticing any blurry effects okay awesome z lightning thank you so the reason this team is going to be fun is we have the decreased defense from deacon we have the weekend from helicath and then we have the increased attack from doom Priest. so the awesome thing about Doom Priest compared to, to Hanarak, she brings the increased attack as well. And in combination with the Deacon variations, it's better because the De Deacon does not have increased attack same way as Seeker has it. So that's why I feel like it's 10 times better to try and do it with 
Doom Priest instead of like maybe bringing a block debuffs because bringing block debuffs makes it a bit complicated again like I said earlier with stun targeting with debuffs that that's what I noticed I built this team for somebody uh, last week as well and <clears throat> you always have to change presets you have to change DPS this way is just easier quality can be improved by your personal YouTube settings and will obviously depend on your data or Wi-Fi connection yeah I changed that I put like higher bitrate my YouTube's my uh, internet's pretty good so you know, hopefully it's going to be good overall. By the way, guys, if you're in here, just smash that like button. Uh, smash that like button. Let's show more people that I'm live. Let's have more people join us, have fun with us, and enjoy the stream. So smash the like button. It's free. There's 70 of you in here, and there's like 11 likes. Come on. <laughs> I thought you liked me. <laughs> I was disappointing seeing Emek useless in Arena. Hope it gets fixed soon. Also, the, you mean that the his passive... The, Puts his own abilities on cooldown of opponents. Oh god. That, that's definitely not good. <laughs> Here one, I need help with my clan boss team. I used to hit 100 million, but I can do now. I need help. I mean, Snipes, if you're interested in, if you're interested in the takeover, just join my Discord and, and DM me in Discord. We can we can discuss a takeover. If you just need some advice, post, post on my Discord as well in the designated channel and we can have a look at it. Bite. Yeah, bite the like button. Just with that. Chomp it. <laughs> just chomp the like button okay so let's uh let's have a look at this so i think the first person that we would want to start with obviously we're going to be using the we will be using the hell hades optimizer because you know what makes it easier to do builds why not and we're going to start building i think the way that i the way that i usually like to do it is i like to build the dps first always the dps because that's where you want the best build Obviously, you would check to see if you can hit the speeds and all the other things, but build your DPS first so you have the best damage. Okay, let's open up the optimizer. Really curious what we can get out of Ronda, and uh, yeah, definitely we'll need to reset our masteries before we start building. You need a cleanser. Oh, you don't have a Doom Priest or to Hanorak, Manny. Don't you already... Didn't they already build your one key team, man? You should be fine. Okay, so let's reset. Because Helm Smasher doesn't help us here. So what we need... We're going to need to go Giant Slayer. So let's go this way. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, over here, Giant Slayer. We're going to have full HP all the time because we have Helicat and Warcaster, which keeps us block damage. So if we had... If, if this team was built with somebody like an Emic instead instead of like the Warcast or instead of the Helicath, then what you would do is you would guaranteed pick this one, Grim Resolve, because you would be under 50% HP at least every other AoE. And at the same time, you'd go down defense tree and you would take the counter deck. And honestly, I think even in this situation, I think I'm going to do the same and grab Deterrence because we will be tanking the stun. We're going to take the stun. And because of that, there's a 20% chance we can counter deck. It just depends... Who's going to tank the stun? And I think that she will be the one that tanks it. Let me just double check on the tune itself. And let me just prepare it. Because why not? Let me just have it. Because I had the tune over here in my video for what I did with uh, Gnut. Okay, so let's get this. Let's get the optimizer over here. Let's do this one. And let's have a look. So this is the link. We're gonna go to Ultra Nightmare. Oh, you need a gear cleanse. Oh yeah, God, bruh. <laughs> oh man, man, sorry. I keep I keep forgetting, bro. I keep forgetting about that. Uh, I, I, there's lots of stuff happening I, IRL as well, but I will definitely get you sorted this week, okay? So if not tomorrow, uh, I don't have anything planned for s Sunday. I think Sunday might be the day. So tomorrow, Friday or Sunday. Saturday is my mom's birthday. We're having a party. The optimizer works for mobile now. I know I, I saw the video. That's that's definitely game changing. So this one's gonna be the Doom Priest. The only sad part of using Doom Priest in this team is she goes in the slower spot. So your DPS will go in this spot, which is gonna be Ronda, and it's gonna be harder to get the right damage, you know. It's gonna be harder to get the right damage in here, and in the sense of like you need to get you need to get them fast. 
So they need to be 250 minimum, okay? Uh, let's double check again. Let's put in here Spirit. The other one will be Warcaster. Let's see. Block damage, block damage. So, yep, everything looks just fine. Doom Priest always goes first. And she cleanses just the first one. So we take the first decrease speed. We no cleanse from Doom Priest. But then everything, you know, everything is going to fall into tune later. It just all depends on the first stun. This is the tricky thing with this tune. Who takes the first stun? Who is better DPS in Clan Boss? Jintor or Tarvald? I think it depends on the tune. They're both a little bit trickier to tune in, in uh, Clan Boss teams because of what they bring. Like Tarvald brings the extra turn and then Jintor gets extra turn meter boost. But I think... Overall, Jintoro can be better if you don't have a ton of buffs. If you have a team where you have lots of buffs, then Torvald is better. Because the more buffs you have on yourself, the more damage Jintoro does. But overall, Jintoro can do more damage. Uh, sorry, Torvald can do more damage as, of, as compared to Jintoro. Whereas Jintoro brings decreased defense and weaken. And again, Torvald only brings the weaken. If Doom Priest gets stunned, does she cleanse that from herself and she still gets her turn? Yes. So that's why it works really good with uh, someone like a Doom Priest, she cleanses herself as well. What do you think are the main areas to cover when building a good high damage clan boss team besides unkillable block damage to also take into consideration someone I have like the fat man? I mean, if you're building an unkillable team, you need you need to have decreased defense, weaken, poisons, and ally attack counterattacks to do as much damage as possible. Use me 13 both work. Okay. Yeah, so for, for those ones, they both were true. Because at least you have the decreased defense from Deacon. So, let's see. <clears throat> so, the only thing is on Spirit. Okay, on Spirit is even better. Because on Spirit, the stun will go to Doom Priest. So, we will not care about like, oh wait, what if the stun goes early on to somebody like a Deacon or a Warcaster? No, with having Doom Priest in the team, she just gonna tank the stun because she's the natural weak affinity and that's gonna be good whereas let's see if we face something like uh magic where the stun could go to deacon or to helicath say stun okay so if the stun goes to deacon there's a problem but if we take actually i think it, even if he takes the stun he might come back to it but I think, let me see, Doom Priest, let me see. Hmm. I think it still works because I could, I could take, uh, what's it called? And I'm definitely going to take Steadfast on Deacon. So the stun will not go on him and will go on Helicat. And I'm just not going to take Steadfast on Helicat. So I don't have any viable and killable champs, what should you focus on? You should focus on getting a killable comp that uses ally protection. How do you choose the stun champion? So the stun targeting is something that's a little bit tricky, but the way that the clan boss looks at it is like, first of all, if everything is equal as in HP, stun, uh, buffs and all that, it would always go towards the, the weak affinity. Next thing, if somebody has increased defense and other people don't, the, uh, the ones that don't have the increased defense, the, the boss is going to target that. Because the boss usually likes to avoid increased defense, counterattack, I think even strengthen, and people with stats fast. But again, if everything else is equal. And usually, it's like I said, the boss likes to prioritize wrong affinity. If everything else, again, affinities are the same, or like if we're facing void, as an example, the boss always checks again, buffs. No increased defense. Okay, we're fine. Then it goes to the next thing, which is... Does anybody have... Uh, what's it called? Like, steadfast. So, Steadfast is something that they avoid as well. Because Steadfast, the boss sees as like a buff. And after that, it's turn order. So, for example, for a block damage team, if we're facing Void, everybody... Like, the order in which you place them is the order in which the stun is going to go. So, as we have it over here, the first person the stun would go to would be Deacon. But, if I'm going to take... The Steadfast Mastery on Deacon, the stun is going to move to the next person in the order, and that's Doom Priest. Okay? When we're going to face Affinities, well, it's going to be like this. The stun will first go, let's say it's Magic, 
first the stun would want to go to Deacon. Okay, but if Deacon has Steadfast, it's gonna move to Helicath. It's gonna move to the next one, as long as they have the same HP and all that. Also, HP levels can matter because this one's a block damage comp. It's not HP should all be the same. But if you have like an unkillable, where that that's where like the budget unkillable becomes complicated. If somebody uh, has lower HP than others as like percentage of their max HP, the one that has the lowest percentage of the max HP is going to be the boss's priority, priority of hitting. Again, if affinities are the same, if the same amount of buffs, if steadfast are, are uh, there, that's that's how it moves to the next thing. It's, you know, stun targeting is something that's a little bit more uh, complicated, but, you know, over time is understood. Yeah, the, it doesn't say anywhere in the game does it explain that Steadfast makes the boss avoid avoid uh, being stunned, you know, avoid taking the stun. And that's kind of important. But okay, let's start with, let me start looking at the Masteries first. So, first things first, let me see, Helicath. Okay. So Helicath, if we have like this, honestly, I would prefer, because he has the weaken on the A1, it is a 50% chance. I would prefer to reset and take him down to support you take Master Hexer and snipe, uh, Sniper. But at the same time, we can leave it. I, I'm not sure we necessarily need to reset. We can leave it like this, you know, save the gems for now. We will see if the damage is not quite there or if we don't have weaken all the time, then we will reset. But because now it requires gems, we're going to keep it as they are. Then Ronda, I did reset the Masteries. Took it down over here. I'm going to take Methodical, actually. Do I take Methodical? I think I can take and I just go down over here instead of getting Retribution. So, Methodical, because she's going to do a ton of A1s. And Support, she doesn't benefit much for her. Like, these could be extended, but for Clan Boss, don't really care. So, let's just go with uh, basic counter-attacking Mastery. Let's go here, here. And then I'm going to take Diagonally, even though this one does not help. I'm going to take Deterrence, because the stun might go to, like I said, Doom Priest. Then that gives her a chance to counterattack. And then everything else here, we can take Life Drinker for other content, we can take Cycle of Violence for other content. And that's Ronda done. Now next one, let's see who do we see next, Deacon. Okay, Deacon, like I said, I think I definitely want to reset and just instead of taking this, I'm going to take Steadfast and go down the same route. So the stun does not go on to him because I don't think he can take the first stun. And that's n that is not good. Same thing. Warmaster over here. We definitely want Heart of Glory. Single out. Take Steadfast. Can take Exalt in Death. Swarm Smiter. Lord of Steel because it's going to help us. For uh, gaining maybe some extra stats. Do not take Cycle of Magic ever. If you're building these types of teams where... People need to do their skills at the right time, such as Deacon needs to be, do his turn meter at the right time. You do not want the 5% chance to proc, no. So just take like Evil Eye for other areas of the game. And Sniper, again, for a higher chance to land the Leech, again, other areas of the game. Was thinking of building up the Fat Man. I just got uh, to helping Clan Boss. Your current team, more or less early game, is Ronda, Fushan, Nekmo, Gio, and Artak. I mean, Farrakhan is going to help you a ton because he's going to bring you poisons. He's going to bring you ally attack. So building Farrakhan is definitely going to be huge. What you're going to need in that team, Devon, is somebody has ally protection. Because you don't have unkillable, ally protection is really important. In ally protection teams, you know, the Toragis, the Rearguard Sergeants, the big legendaries, Tyrants. After ally protection, try to bring increased defense, decrease attack. These are the three most important things. Increase defense, decrease attack, ally protection, and strengthen if you can. Okay, that's Deacon done. Next one is Warcaster. Okay, so Warcaster, same principle. Crit rate, crit damage. Okay, boom, boom. We're going to go to Warmaster. And for him, we don't care about his debuffs. We come down over here because, again, we are tanking the stun. And we can go Retribution, and we can go Deterrence. This one, then this one, and Wrath of the Slain. Okay, that's Warcaster done. And the last one, who did I miss? Let me see. Doom Priest. Okay. Doom Priest, what does she have? Doom Priest, this is just fine. Deterrence, Warmaster, all's good. So Doom Priest, Warcaster, Deacon, Helicath, and Ronda. Yeah. Okay, let's start building. No worries, Devon. Happy to help. 
So, the way that I like to build teams, when I start building teams using the optimizer, I always try to give the champions, so that it makes it faster for the optimizer, I always try to give the champions the bottom row pieces first. What I mean by that is I always try to manually pick a banner, an amulet, and a ring okay so in our situation for example i would go with ronda and i'm building ronda first because i want my main dps to have the best gear possible on the account especially if this is a priority to get the highest damage possible so we go to ronda we go and click attack and then we see which speed what do we have so we have this one that's 12 speed attack percent then we have this one that has 10 speed i could try and see if this one gives me more speed that might be good if not moving on to the next thing Okay, it's not, uh, it didn't give me more speed, which means that the banner that we're already wearing is better. There could be another option, depending on the speeds that you want, that you could go with attack banner with attack percent. But because we're trying to get high speed, because as shown over here, Ronda needs to be 250 speed, which is high. We're definitely going to try and get all the speed that we can on the banner as well. I'm not going to swap the banner for something else. I'm going to keep this one. One thing, though, to keep in mind, when you're building block damage teams, if you can get revenge accessories, go for them. That means extra counterattacks, extra damage. So something like this, if this was crit damage, I would cons I would definitely uh, use it on her because it's an attack one. And maybe if it rolled double crit damage, I could look at it. But maybe, I don't know, it, it could be an idea. Bill John Cannon, thank you for the subscription. Welcome. So this one could be an option, but for now I prefer to have a crit damage one. So we're going to keep that. And when it comes to rings, pretty simple, straightforward, attack ring with attack percent. Let's see what do we have. So we have this one as a double roll. This one has to roll attack from the beginning. If not, we're moving on. Moving on, we already have a better one. No point rolling and wasting silver. So the bottom pieces are set for Ronda. Let's uh, go to champions. Let's write Ronda. Let's go damage. I they, they updated this recently and I'm I'm looking a little bit <laughs> maybe if, if something I do, don't do the best is because they updated I'm still getting used to it. But we will go to Ronda now. Let's go primary max primary attributes. You'll go to damage, highest overall. Even though you would not use the A3, you most use A2 and A1. Go highest overall. Then you go to stats and uh, like I said, we need what 251 speed. One thing I want to check before is how are we doing with speed glyphs? We have some speed glyphs. So what I can do is with Ronda, because she's the most important, let's try and put 240 speed only and glyph the rest. And that's about it. But before I start optimizing, I click slots, remove ring, remove amulet and remove banner because we already selected those. So this is going to make it easier now to find the build. So click optimize and click start. David Valich, salute, salute. Hello, welcome. Let's see, so it says it does not work. Let me just give it a refresh. Sometimes when it doesn't do that, you have to give it a refresh. If you see that you don't see the live refresh button, it means that you just need to refresh it. Okay, let's see. Those ones not selected. 240 speed. Highest damage overall. Take that uh, from other ones. Okay, let's see. Let's see what's it going to give us. So see, it instantly did it. Boom, just like that. And you can either, you can watch it like this, you know, Click it and it shows you what stats you get. Or I, I'm just used to the old school stuff. I just click view as list and boom. That's what I get. So we have this one that has 241 speed, 4.3k attack, 171 crit damage. Let's see what build is it. And it is, it's even in relentless. Okay, did I put relentless? Okay, I did actually pull relentless. So the thing with this team is... If you run Relentless, you have to have the champion be, I think, 252. Or DPS can be like any speed. Let me see. Boom, boom. Yeah, I think she can be Relentless. Because she's uh, she always goes before the block damage stuff happens. Yep. Yep. Actually, let me see. Hmm. Okay, so... If I build Relentless on her, as you see what I just did there, she has to be 254, because if she's lower than that, in in the spot where Warcaster does, let me see, is it like that? 
Warcaster, Helicaster. Over here, when Helicaster does the block damage, if she gets extra turns, she can outrun the, the block damage. So if we up the speed, boom, see, Helicaster goes after her. So she needs to be 254. <clears throat> Please, please, please help me out. I can't figure out how to beat Ocho Nightmare. I know I could beat him, though. Uh, the Buds, just post in my Discord. Or if you're interested in a takeover, just uh, DM me on Discord. But whatever questions you have, just post and let me know. I have tons of videos on Clan Boss. So what, what exactly do you want to know? Or like how... What are you struggling with? Okay, so let me, let me check again. So I need to be 254. Okay? 241 might be a little bit too low. So let me just... Push it to 245 and then lift the difference. Let's see. One thing that I will also check is... Is it worth to have Relentless? Like, if, if I lose too much attack and crit damage just for Relentless, then I would rather switch it to normal. So, in Relentless, I can do this. 247, I would have to glyph 7 speed. Let me see. Uh, I can glyph over here. And I can glyph over here. So, I could have a 4 and a 3. Or maybe I could try risking getting some more speed somewhere else. So, there is a chance. Or, let me see the next one. Maybe I have more spots. Okay, I could glyph over here. I could glyph over here. Okay, so this one, the second one would be better because I have three spots I could glyph. So, yeah. So, basically, I would have 4.1k attack. And 171 crit damage with this build. Now, if I use any build, let's see what's it, what's it gonna give me. If I don't use Relentless, but any build, let's see how big is the difference. So I would have 4.8k, 203. So honestly, for like, what, 700 attack and 30, 40, 30 crit damage, I feel like it's just gonna be better to have the Relentless. So I think we're just gonna go with the Relentless, plus we're gonna be able to glyph some attack maybe in there, so... Feel like we're going with the Relentless build over here. And we're going to go with this one. This one over here. Because like I said, we can glyph speed in more spots. So we can get her to the 254 speed that we need. So let's start building that one up. Okay, so Ronda. We have the bottom stuff. Now, speed boot. Right. Where is it? Over here, it's this one. Why does it look so weird? Okay. Right. Okay, so it's that one. Crit rate and defense. I'm going to have to max it out. Because, you know, speed we kind of need it now. Then attack percent with speed, crit damage, and HPs. This one's from him. Crit rate glove. I'm sorry, Gnut. We're going to have to take that for you from you for now. Get another piece from Gnut. And I'm guessing, like, you know, we had the best stuff on Gnut, but if it's going to help us do the get to the one key damage on Ronda, we're definitely going to want it. And then this, so we have 247, 100%, okay. And that's the Ronda build. It's just glyph stuff and get her to 254. Okay, Snipes, I replied to you just uh, after I finish the stream. If you can DM me again so we can talk about it, okay? If that's okay with you, Snipes. Okay, so let's glyph now. We need, what, 254. This one's 18. This one's a pretty good piece, honestly. I don't want to use 6-star speed glyphs for it. So I'm going to go with 4. Come on, give me a 3 at least. 2. Mm. Let's see. 249. Fatmir Balihodzic. I hope I said your name right. Thank you for the subscription. Welcome. Uh, let me see. What else can I glyph? Oh, yeah. This one. Mm -mm -mm. Come on. Give me a four. I need a bigger roll in there. Three. Okay. So, I have 252. So, I need two more speed, which I think I can glyph over here. We have a two-star glyph. We have... Hmm. Let me see. If I go one speed faster, is it a problem? No, so I can go to 255. I just cannot be under 254. Let me go again to Spirit and see. 254. 
Yeah, okay, so I can go to 255, which means I can risk using a 3-star glyph in here to get a 3 or a 2. Come on. Fuck off. Okay, we got a 3, so round us 255. Yeah, okay, round us 255. Now let's see, any attack that I can glyph? Because accuracy doesn't help her, no attack, no attack. That The shield can never get attack anyway. Nope. No. No. Over here, do we have any 4-star glyphs? Okay, 2. Okay, we're short on attack glyphs, it seems, but hopefully we're gonna be fine. Attack sword the glyph. Okay, so that's run the build. Number 1 down. <clears throat> no speed from area bonuses. Oh, that's a good, that's a good shout. Okay, that's good. So, no speed. So, Hitman, keep in mind... If you're gonna start putting stuff in the affinity bonuses, do not put speed for clan boss. If you go over here, if you're gonna do live arena and you go area bonuses, do not put speed over here. If you do that, it's gonna throw off the, the speed tune for the clan boss team, so be careful. Be careful. Wish you could get your DK as well. Right now, I don't even bother hitting any team that has him in the arena. I mean, if you have a Ronda, Devon, just hit with Ronda. Do the 8 on him. Job done. Or I use, uh, so for example, I use Supreme Elhane. He just destroys them. Or yeah, Magna. There's, there's plenty of options. There's plenty of options against him. Okay, so that's run that done. Next one, which we can build. Honestly, I think the next one that I want to go for is... Actually going to be Helicath, but the, because again, he's fast, but I want to give him some damage. So, Helicath is the second hardest hitter in this team so let's see what can we get on helicath uh first things first again let's see do we get any accuracy with speed that's what i need accuracy with speed the highest speed that we can get so we have this one which has 16 speed that's massive unless i get double speed on this one even with defense could be interesting 20 defense hmm this one could be a good competitor so i might leave this to the optimizer to choose between these two because this one gives me lots of speed this one gives me defense percent. Now, when it goes, when it comes to the amulet, I want as much accuracy as I can get from it, but with a crit damage amulet. So let's see, what do we have as options? One and one again. This one can, let's see, can it double? One, double. Oh man, <laughs> same thing. So we have the same thing, which means that we're just gonna straight up use this amulet. Let's just max it out. Place it over there. Can only get around 55k on Artek with the gear I have. Is it that good enough? I mean, depends what else, uh, like what build, what team, uh, Fatmir. It's 55k HP, sounds good. How, what's the defense, what's the accuracy, what's the team around them? Okay, now defense with defense percent. Highest defense possible, double, okay. <clears throat> One thing that we could look at, actually, let me see, is do we have, again, revenge accessory? damage nope so i guess same thing ring anything no so we're just gonna go with defense defense percent none and we're gonna go with this one and that's helicast just have to think about the over here yeah ronda's literally anti-udk that's true need more uh need your ronda with more attack and crit damage currently working on that recently six tower and fully ascended She's pretty good. She's pretty good for damage. She's pretty good for arena. <clears throat> and I've even seen some uh, people say that she can do some funky stuff for Doom Tower Waves. Where you bring a debuff spread such as Vizier, such as Harkin Great Play, such as Tuhanorak. And you do this with her, day two. And then you do a debuff spread and basically everybody has block active skills and block passive skills. That's a that's big brain stuff. Should I go Tech Ring and Banner for Ronda? Yes. You don't need any accuracy, keep in mind. You don't need any accuracy on her, so you can go attack, attack, and crit damage an amulet. So, one thing that I did uh, forgot to look at, I was mentioning earlier, <clears throat> if you're building block damage teams, remember to look at revenge accessories, but at the same time, remember retaliation gear. If you can, get, if you can squeeze some retaliation there, go for it. This one doesn't look like we're going to have much options. Let me just roll this to A just in case, but... 
Retaliation is one of the best things you can get because it gives you a straight up 15% chance counterattack. Counterattacking means what? More debuffs if you have them on the A1, more Warmaster slash Giant Slayer procs. So, worth keeping in mind. Like, I have crew damage and speed. I have this one. So, there are options. Look at this. This one could be on somebody. Defense with speed, maybe. Speed? Crit rate, mm, not the best. But there are options, so maybe I might end up building Helicast with one set. Let's see. So let's go for Helicast now. Let's live refresh. Let's go for damage on, suppose, the A1. That's any. We need, so the thing is for Helicast, we need 230 accuracy. And we need him to be, let's see, what's this? 253, 250 minimum speed. Let's see what we can get, first of all. But first... These two, because we already put them, the amulet was still leaving it for options. What is the the better DPS for the Heart Eater, Michinaki, Ronda, Perugio, and Draco? Uh, I would say Ronda. Because Draco, I would not, I'm, honestly, I would not get Geo in there. Marcus, first of all. I would rather drop, drop Geo. And get Michinaki and Ronda maybe together. The thing with Draco is, when you have Draco Morph in the team, other DPS people are not going to bring you much unless they're ally attack or joint attack such as Ronda because Draco feels the debuff bar on his own. If you go on a 2 to 1 ratio at least. I'm not sure if the Heart Eater is 2 to 1 ratio. If it is, Draco just, Draco just fills the debuff bar. Hellcat already counterattacks. At the, oh yeah, that's true, Disama. That's true, you're right. So, retaliation is not, not, uh, not an option for uh, Hellcat. I always forget about this passive. Always forget about his passive. Bruh, why did the music stop? Okay. Yeah, the, the counterattack passive. That's true, that's true. So, we don't really care about that. So, let's just see what this one gave us. So, we have 251 speed. That's good. 4.1k defense and 183 crit damage. That's not bad. And... See, exactly like I said, do you see what it's using over here? Let me just zoom it in. It's actually using... Bruh. I need to tell them when it, when you zoom in, it doesn't look good. But it's actually using the accuracy banner that gave me double defense percent. That's why I let it choose on its own, because I knew it's going to go a little bit funky. But why does it give me the crit rate glove from Gnut if I already used it? Did I not already put that on uh, Ronda? Bruh. Yeah, I did. So why does it use this? <sighs> Come on. Okay, I can go for the second build at least. I can go for the second build. 250 speed, 4.3k, 166. Finally home. How are you doing, Mr. Vampire Lord? I'm doing good, Bambi. How are you doing? Welcome home. Crit damage scales from where the champ's damage comes from. Crit rate determines when the crit damage pops. Exactly. You always try to get 100% crit rate. Live research. I think I already did that and still did the same thing. Let's try again. Okay, let's see. Yeah, see, it still thinks that piece of gear is on a uh, round. I'm just gonna go for the second build. Okay, let's build Helicath now. So he's gonna have the accuracy banner. With speed, this one. And uh, we're gonna need to max it because obviously we need the speed in there. Uh, the accuracy, sorry. Speed, crit rate, crit damage. Thank you, Harima. Okay. Uh, crit damage and speed. Thank you, Skull Crusher. Again, something from Harima. Speed and flat defense. It, 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 if it works, you know, if name broke, don't fix it. Speed, crit rate, accuracy, and I think it's attack percent, but let's just get this. He already wears that. And then the last one is speed, crit damage, and accuracy, and reflex. This is a pretty good... Look at this. This is huge. Okay, so he's 250, 100%, 166. Good accuracy, just need to max out the... Just need to max out, get the speed that we need, and max out, like, whatever else we need to, which is nothing. 
<laughs> Need nine far uh, more attack accessories. Usually have your auto battle setting to sell attack accessories. Yeah, I mean you don't need a. Uh, you don't really need attack amulets, only for bomb champions or some weird exceptions such as Manitar, Sinatia, they have low base attack and can do damage, or like Brogneys could also use that, but it has to roll the crit damage in it. If you come out of the backpack and go back in it, it will send a live update to the optimizer. It sometimes needs that to refresh, then you re-optimize to get new op options. Okay, let me have a look at that, that's true, let's have a look. So if we go into the inbox, we see lots of energy, we see silver in here. And uh, let's see. So if I do this now, let's see if it's gonna give me the same thing or not. See it still did not update. It still did not it does it does weird stuff. I know I know I talk with Seth about this and they still have not found what the issue is. But one thing he did mention is if you click equip an optimizer, it it makes it not work anymore. So I don't know why though. I did not click it. That's why I specifically don't click it. I just equip it in game, then live refresh it so it appears in game. But yeah, let's go back to the build. So Helicast, he needs to be, let me see. Let's make sure over here that we put one speed set and one perception. Speed plus perception. Okay, that's interesting. Really? It can be so much slower. Let me see. Is, is that the range? Slow block damage. Okay. It's interesting. Okay, so Helicat can be only 253. That's interesting. If I do this, it still works. Don't get why. I mean, I guess let's keep him to 253. Just to be on the safe side, no lot of steel though. Seth broke the optimizer, I know. Freaking Seth. If you click select artifacts and click on the artifact, it will update. Okay, let, let me see. So, artifacts. Uh, Like, is this what you mean, Tommy? Buggy right now can't optimize while uh, playing because it kicks you out of champ select whenever first run. Oh, okay. I mean, I think I'm I'm just fine with this. I don't have a problem. Let me just finish this. So I need to get three speed on him. Let's see. Three speed. Where can I glitch speed? I can glitch some speed over here. And over here. And over here. So I can glitch because we have lots of one star glitch. I can go one speed on every single one and save the bigger ones in case I need for other stuff. So let's do the speed first. Okay, another one speed here. The green button that says select artifacts. Okay. And now you sh you, s you think it's it should work. Let's see. Still does not update the Gnut piece. See, that's weird. I don't know. Anyway. Then select the artifact. Okay. So I just need to look for the Gnut piece. Let's see. Uh, let's go to gloves. See, doesn't. Okay, so after you click it says that then if you live refresh if you live refresh it goes back to Gnut which is weird okay okay anyway that's there's just some weird stuff it does so let's see 252 one more speed over here honestly I would love to use a six star speed glyph over here because it's it's a good roll I didn't even know that part, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me just give it, come on, give me a four at least. Two, give me a four, please. Four uh, or three, okay? At least give me three and I'll be fine. Bruh. Come on, give Helicat more defense. Bruh. At least it's CVC, okay, we got a three. 
And I'm gonna go with a little bit of accuracy. Six, that's fine. Hello, how are you today? Hello, Ivy too. I hope you're well too. Alan Cracker, I'm doing good, mate. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well yourself. Defense glyph, this one's glyph. Let's see what's over here. Glyph. We're fine. No defense to glyph. Okay, I can throw a little bit of defense in here. 3%, that's fine. How good is Apothecate for Clan Boss and how should he be built? Apothecary can enable some 2 to 1 ratio teams, which means you go more often, which means you do more damage. So Apothecary can be good because, well, he brings increased speed and turn meter boost on his A3. And then he brings triple hit A1 on the A, uh, triple hit on the A1 with Giant Slayer. But he's not the best in uh, Clan Boss. If you don't have better options, then you would go for a basic White Whale comp, it's called with Apothecary. But up until you have a speed tuned team, Apothecary could be your best friend because he's good in dungeons. Is there a turn limit to Sand Devil trying to solo with an Eerie till you get into neutral positive affinity? There's 1500 turns limit. So if you don't have a war if you don't have Warmaster on her, it might be impossible for you to do that, Tony. Okay, let's see. I could say I guess I can throw a little bit of I, I I don't really we don't really need a 243, we're fine. This one I want. Come on, give me a four in here at least. Make it a 4 and we're good. 3. Okay, fine. <clears throat> okay, so Helicath is done. 253. Good defense, good crit damage. It's it's tough to work with. Now, next one in line. Let's see. So we did these two the faster. Now, I think the next one that I want to go with is... Either Doom, either Doom Priest or Deacon or what? You know what? Let's go with Warcaster. He needs to be really fast, so... Let's check Warcaster, let's see what we can do. Maybe we can get Warcaster with some retaliation. So Warcaster damage, 270, don't care about accuracy. Retaliation. Let's see, can we do at least one set or not? It might be a no, yeah. What do you think of Wukong's leaked abilities? He doesn't seem that impressive. I mean, I'm not sure. You're not Tony, I'm sorry, not Tony. <laughs> I'm sorry, not Tony. But yeah, the Wukong abilities, I, I don't want to speak about them up until I actually see him in the game. Because right now, there's nothing much to go off, you know? It's just, okay, some abilities. So the best we have is this one with one speed, or... Do I have something? Let's see. Another option when you need to go for this high speed is... Do they have, like, double, triple speeds? If not, not really worth it. Might as well just keep the attack and go with this one. Crit damage, let's see, with attack. I'm gonna have to take it off helmet because I don't wanna roll the other one. Plus, this one's better for helmet because you need accuracy. Alicath does, uh... Yeah, Warcaster does not. Then, again, attack ring or any revenge, no. Okay, then attack ring with attack percent. What do we have? Okay, let's see, attack. One, one more. No, okay, so this one should be better. Come on, give me at least one roll in attack percent. Thank you, one more. No, that's fine. We're still going to keep it. Okay, that's Warcaster. Now, let's go and live refresh. Let's see about this. So, retaliation is a no-no. Then, any sets. Remove these three. And let's see the best damage we can get on him. Hey, Ardman, what's up? Hey, chat, citizens. Hello, hello, welcome. How viable is Warcaster in Hydra for block buffs when you uh, miss the most OP chance for block buffs? I mean, let me see. 75% chance is not reliable enough. Instead of doing this, I would try to go with maybe a uh, Mischief Tank, AWHP Burn, somebody remove stuff. I, I don't like it. Like, he doesn't bring... And the thing is... He doesn't bring anything else, you know? The block damage is too risky, because if this gets stolen, you're screwed. If you don't have Mischief Tank, the A1 can steal random buffs, and then he can become a Mischief Tank, so... I don't really like him for that. Do you need to book Warcaster for Clan Boss Comp? Yes, you want his A3 booked, at least for this specific tune that I'm making today, which is called the Deacon Forever, which is basically Batman Forever with Deacon. 
It's Deacon Warcaster and a two turn block damage or unkillable champion that has the skill on a four turn cooldown. So in our case, Helicath. But yeah, back to the Hydro question. Warcaster is not good enough for Hydro, in my opinion. He, do he just doesn't bring anything else. Marjan Krlikar. Hello, hello, welcome. Depends on the effects mentioned on his A2 and how his pseudo ally attack works. Could actually be better than a regular ally attack if it uses his uh, stats without the damage penalty. Yeah, exactly. It just, it's too many things to take into consideration. So I would not say anything up until we see him, you know, out. <laughs> but yeah, let's, uh, let's see what can we do in Warcaster. So, that's not too bad. At this high speed, 270, even though we need to glyphate speed... 3k attack and 166 crit damage is not the worst. Okay, obviously it's gonna go with all, but it keeps getting me this one, bruh. You know what I have to do? I just have to do this. Close the optimizer and re-upload. That, that's what fixes it usually. Reopen the optimizer and go again. Just got Cantra. She I told she's good for Hydra. She's amazing. I would love to have a Cantra on my account. She's amazing. She brings you... <clears throat> A chance to provoke that of DK. She brings a ton of debuffs, lots of hits, good passive. She's good. Is Emmy good for Hydra? I don't think so. Because his kit doesn't bring much I can think of that's good in uh, Hydra. Yeah, I run it. I run it. I always run it as administrator. How would I build her? Relentless with damage. Accuracy enough to land the debuffs on whatever difficulty you fight. And good speed, like 2 220 speed and as much damage as possible because she can hit. The game showed mercy on me today after we were last in Hydra. Three voids in the cardial. Nice. Nice. That that's good odds, mate. Congrats. Okay, let's go again. Let's see. Clear. Okay, so now wants to take from Helicat. I just need to lock him. Let's go again. Okay, so it's obviously going to go with speed sets and bottom pieces. But I might need to go. I'm going to go with the 275, so I have to glyph less. I need to glyph 3 speed. Can I glyph 3 speed? Okay, I can glyph here. And here, so I have 2 spots. Okay. Clan may say that he is good. He basically used him to get cooldowns faster on Cardial to get more damage. His team one keyed brutal. I mean, if you don't have better options, I guess, yeah, you can use him for the shields and stuff like that. And for the taunt, but... I don't I have not played with him in Hydra, but his kit at first sight does not scream Hydra for me, no? I found Vizix is amazing for Hydra. Preston, I always sing her prayers. People need to listen to me. V6 is a god for Hydra. She's amazing. She brings you the AoE decrease speed. She brings you provoke. She brings you ally protection. It's like, bruh, people need to stop ignoring V6 for Hydra. She is bonkers. She's just amazing. Speed and accuracy, I guess. Okay. Speed and crit rate. Okay, 275. There we go. How fast she needs to be? Again, depends depends on your whole team. You want to be as fast as possible with as much damage as possible. But normally, if you have increased speed and turn meter stuff, I think around 220 speed is good. The higher difficulty, again, the highest, fastest... You can, you know, 250, go for Nightmare if you can, but you sacrifice that, you know, you sacrifice some damage for, for some speed. <clears throat> She's even more amazing as a plus one in the top right corner of Lydia's portrait. Not really, it's not worth it. That's just a waste of time. Like, people that do that, I'm just, I don't know. I don't trust people that do that, okay? If they, if, if you have a, I mean, if you have a stacked enough account that you really do not care about Vesex and just want to empower Lydia, fair enough. Otherwise, I'm using Vesex on my main account on my Brutal team. 
Yeah, every champ should be 220, 250, like the higher difficulty you go, Marjan, but as much damage as possible as well. Let's see, so I need to be 250, let's see. So, Warcaster has, I think it was three speed sets or two and a, no, two speed sets, okay. Speed times two. Bruh. Okay, let's see. Why does it say I keep ke I can keep going down? I guess I'm just gonna keep 278. <clears throat> okay, so 278, I need to glyph 3 speed. So can I get a 3 over here? Oh god. <clears throat> Give me a 4 of them. 2, fuck off. I need one more speed. Uh, should have one here, right? Yep, there we go. One more speed over here, and we're good. Sure, I'm gonna uh, watch on Netflix. Snipes, thanks for dropping by, mate. Like I said, DM me later and remind me about the takeover. We can talk about it. How often do I do takeovers? I mean, I do pay takeovers anytime, any, you know, whenever I have time. So always, all the time. But, you know, just need to, if you're interested, just DM me on Discord. We can talk about it. If I have the time, I would, I'm doing takeovers 24 7 as a paid service because it's my full time job, you know. I gotta eat. Using the same comp as you're building, but with Emic, Shutdown A2, Deacon, Poison, Warcaster. Yeah, I need to get somebody in Toxic as well. I was actually, you know what? I was gonna look at this. I already built him. Fuck. Can I, could I have done Toxic on him? I, I don't think so, because the speed is pretty high. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I think the last ones are gonna be Deacon and Doom Priest. So I have to see between Deacon and Doom Priest who do I build in Toxic. I do think. Deacon hits harder than Doom Priest, if I'm not mistaken. Not affinity friendly, but dealing about 85 million per key. I mean, if you have a... Oh, you have Cardial, so... I'm surprised not affinity friendly with Cardial, though. One more for Hydra. What speed should be Shamel as Mischief Tank? I mean, sorry, if you want to get... Uh, Shamel to be the Mischief Tank, he has to be the slowest. Because you want him to not go as often and have have the most buffs on him. What about other difficulty if you change speed or you only focus on Ultra Nightmare? I think it shouldn't be a problem. Let's have a look. So if you go Nightmare. Yep, same thing. It still works. Brutal, honestly, Brutal should just do damage. Hard, sometimes they don't go into sync. But honestly, for Hard, it's just like... You're gonna do the wonky damage, and if all the clan hits, you're good. So, okay, let's go to the next one. The next one is gonna be... I think I'm gonna go with Deacon. And leave Doom Priest as the last, and I'm gonna try and do a damage Doom Priest, because why not? And maybe... <laughs> do I do Relentless Doom Priest? Do I do Relentless? I could do Relentless Doom Priest if I want to, but... I'm not sure I'm gonna do that. Okay, let's see Deacon. So for Deacon, want an accuracy banner. Oh, look at that. Look at that banner. Hey, what did you do your giveaways this week? Joseph, not yet. I need to do... I need to do them all by the end of next weekend. So I need to do the five for the 540 gems. And then I need to do the other one with the void chart. So I'll see if I do them this week, five, and then the next one uh, later. Honestly, I would love to use a six-star glyph on this one because it, it's just a juicy banner. But for a re for just for what's it called? Just for the sake of clan boss, maybe not. Like maybe for end game stuff, you'd prefer to have the only six-star glyph for other things. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. That could be for something else. Malik Fitness, thank you for the subscription. Welcome along. How are you doing? I was, I was gonna be like, bro, we have no crit damage. Come on, give me accuracy one roll here. Uh, I'm still gonna use it. Attack. Deacon's gonna do damage. So. Okay, let's see. Any. Attack with attack percent. 
guess this is the best that we have and that's what we use and now let's have a look do i go with toxic and retaliation this one i might try to see toxic and retaliation if i can do it how is how's the toxic set looking on this account first things first speed boot we have a speed boot but no crit rate over there <clears throat> you rolled quad speed on perception six star shield last week nice that's uh yeah perception is definitely the best ones that you would want to roll speed on especially quads that's that's just crazy but let me see speed okay more speed and accuracy okay okay that could work speed and crit damage can get more speed resist mm. speed and accuracy i, I want to see if like we have crit rates and stuff we have crit damage and crit rate okay any attack percent no so the thing is don't have the best options but oh this one's this one's juicy oh look at this weapon this is good see you beat that poppy look at me like what why you make that noise papa okay let's see if we can do that so let's go with deacon damage 230 he needs to be 226 let's go 220 and let's see toxic plus retaliation let's see are we pushing it or does it work hmm let me live refresh do not use these three let's see again hmm let's just lower the crit rate a bit really i guess let's go only toxic then I think I have only one quad uh, ever in four years. Stone skin, five star speed, but quad roll the crit rate. Yeah, I know, I know how it is. Sometimes you just <laughs> don't do it. What is Jokul any good for? I pulled him with Kaimar last week and I'm looking to use him somewhere. I mean, it depends on your account, Stefan. If, because uh, Jokul is not the best champion in the game, but if you're still progressing through the game and let's say you don't have Metralla, that Jokul can be used. He brings increased attack, increased defense. He has a funky block damage. If not, just use him at level 50 in Faction Wars. There are some there are some quirky clan boss teams I've seen with them, but definitely I would not go too crazy in it. Okay, let's uh, leave that 100%. Let's go again. Okay, 3.1k attack, 140 crit damage, 226 speed, and toxic. Okay, that's exactly what we need. Bruh, again, why does... <sighs> why does it keep using the stuff that they already have on people? I already have that one. I already have the crit rate glove on somebody else. We're starting two weeks time, so fa exactly, faction wars then. Okay, let's see 3.1 120 crit okay the crit damage is extremely low though i guess it's uh and it's because of the toxic it goes toxic with cruel so that could be that could work could work so let's see it uses this one that i just rolled yep let's max it out then this one actually yeah all of the toxic pieces are not worn so and this one. And then this. Speed boot. Yeah, I think it's like the speed boots are not the best, so I get why. Crit rate. Let's see. I think it's... Yep, this one. Can I get crit damage, please? No. Okay, that's fine. And then attack percent. So why is it like, why does it say 220? Oh, it's just 220. I need to glyph stuff. Okay, I can glyph some stuff because I need to get to 226. That should be fine. Okay, that's Deacon. Let's get, uh, get some stuff in here, maybe. Oh, wait a second. I have 221, so I need five speed. Let me see. Can I glyph one star? One, two, three, four. Five. Perfect. So I'm just going to use one star glyphs because we have more of those and save the other ones because, you know, we can be efficient with stuff. We're going to try and be efficient with stuff. So this. 
Let's give some one star glyphs at least for speed. For uh, attack, I mean. Keep okay, more speed in here. More speed in here. Here, one, talk about toxic and he shall appear. <laughs> Welcome, Sergeant Toxic. I'm just using your favorite set in the game right now Toxic plus Cruel. On the Clambus team. <laughs> Ronda isn't enough, uh... No, yeah, Ronda is relentless. I put Ronda relentless, I think... To be fair, Deacon is actually the better option with, uh... With Toxic, as opposed to Doom Priest. Because Deacon always attacks. Even when he does his A3, he gets extra turn and goes into the A2. Whereas Doom Priest... Well, Doom Priest, sometimes she doesn't attack, because she's gonna do the increased attack. When she does this, she doesn't attack. So it was a good option to go with, uh... Deacon for the what's it called for the toxic set instead of uh, instead of the Dumpris. Good evening, Imre. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> okay, let's see, let's see what's the next one. So the next one's Dumpris. So we we're done with uh, Deacon and Dumpris is last. So for Dumpris. The good thing with Doom Priest is she doesn't need just damage. So let's see how much damage can we squeeze out of a Doom Priest. Attack with speed and attack percent. Can we do that? No. Can we do attack percent? No. Speed? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. What's the highest speed we have? Nine. Nope. Can we get some speed in here? Nope. Okay. So I guess I would have to steal from Skull Crown or she's wearing defense one. Whose account is this? This account is Hitman's. This is a takeover that I'm doing for somebody. It's it's a paid takeover. And we're just doing it on stream because he redeemed. He basically wanted a takeover, but he wanted to have it with a coaching. So the best way that I can do the coaching is I'm doing it on stream, explaining what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. And if he has any questions, you know, questions can always be asked. And it's kind of like, Yep, you, you're highlighted on my YouTube. <laughs> so, it seems... Okay, can I get another speed on this one? This might be better. No. Okay, so I guess... I don't take this one, but it's the same. Or this. I'm just gonna go with this one. And use that. Then, let's see. Crit damage with attack. Or do I have any other crit damage rolled? No. Again, let's just take to 12 for now. And then, honestly, over here, no revenge again, so I prefer attack with attack percent. That one's okay. Can I get another attack on this one? Ooh! Juicy. Okay, I'm not gonna max them yet. I wanna completely finish the regear before I max it in case we uh, run out of silver. <clears throat> okay, so Doom Priest. We want damage on the A1. Speed needs to be, what, 201, so let's go now 195. And uh, let's see, can we get some retaliation on her? Let's push it to two first, it might be a bit greedy. Let's try and push it to two pieces of retaliation. Let's see. Okay, two, it, it, we cannot go two sets, let's just go one set then. Try again. Okay, so we can do that. This is looking good. Yes, yeah, so far so good. Okay, so look at this Doom Priest. 3.2k attack, 202 crit damage. Oh my god. And with the retaliation set on. That's awesome. Speed, retaliation, all the good stuff. Okay. First things first though. There's a piece that I need to roll that can get speed. And I hope it doesn't because it's going to screw things up. This one. So if he gives us speed, I have to look again. Okay, no speed. That's fine. Nothing else can give me speed, which means this build is a go, and we even have the... What's it called? We even have the spot to glyph it. Speed, crit, crit damage, and accuracy. Bruh, I hate when I do that. I hate when I click on the fitting room instead of something else. Anyway, the beginning. We're at the beginning, at least. Crit, crit damage, and resist. Okay. 
Crit damage with crit rate, speed, and attack and attack. I'm sorry, Brogni. You gotta give it for Doom Priest. Then attack percent with speed and resist. Okay. And then a speed boot from uh, Nethril. Crit rate. One ninety nine, okay. One eighty eight, two point nine. Okay, so that's the Doom Priest build, and this is done. We just need to glyph two speed. So need to glyph two speed, which is gonna be one speed here and one speed here. Okay, so let's go. Speed one here, and another speed over here. And see, we're already short on silver, but I'd rather uh, max. Roll this one because it's attack percent, you know. There we go. Now what else? This one can give me some stuff, not the priority. Crit damage. Okay, let's max this one. Look at this. If I would have maxed it and the ring, I would have been like buy silver. <laughs> That's it, we're done, you know. Always need to be careful with that silver when you're trying to build stuff. And when you're trying to roll the accessories. The accessories cost so much, it's it hurts. It hurts when you think how much they actually cost. Okay, let me see. Yeah, accessories can be ridiculously expensive. That's true. Bro, why did it roll that? Come on, give me a little bit more. Make it a three at least. Two. Okay, fine. I'll take it. Now then. Let's see. Let's see how this team rolls. Let's see how this team actually rolls. I have to click red dots because, you know, red dots. So, let's go to Ultra Nightmare. Let me see. Okay. Clan boss team. Oh, yeah. I need to put the presets first. So, put the presets. Let me just check. Okay, first things first. This one does not have to be four turns. It's like that's how it used to be a while back. It's stuff like this. So, if we're facing spirit, everything falls into sync pretty fast. Yep, turn six. If it's a void, same thing. Force, magic, see, nightmare. Nightmare falls into sync even faster. Let's see, Spirit. Same thing. Yep, all's good. So this team should work on everything. Because I have the speed sets. I have all the right stuff in here. So we're good. Okay, wait. Actually, I have not put this. I think Deacon had one speed set, right? Let me double check. No, no speed set. Okay. No speed set on Deacon. But he has Lord of Steel. And one speed set on Dome Priest. So no Lord of Steel. And one speed set. Looks okay. Ford Munstein, hello, hello. How are you doing? Welcome. Oh, yeah, so let's go again. Double check the speeds 226, 201, 255, 278, 253. Okay, now presets, priority one, priority two. Make sure he's booked. Yep. Doom Priest, I definitely want to increase attack. Ronda, she's going to do whatever. When you're facing Affinity, you're better off just turning off the A2 and A3 because she's going to do more damage with just the A1. When you're facing non-Affinity on Void, this one can help more because it ignores defense. So, it's Ronda. Warcaster priority this. I don't care about the A2. Helicath priority, and I think it's open with this one. If I remember correctly, let me see. Yes. Yep, yeah, open with somebody, something else. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's see how this is gonna look. Let's see how this is gonna look. Can we get? Do we have enough for one key? Like I'm a, I'm a little bit on the fence because of the gearing situation, but it's, it's gonna be really close to a one key damage. I do think it's gonna be really close to the one key damage. <clears throat> What did we just not land a decrease defense there? I 
And this is why I like Ronda. She just keeps joining the attacks, you know. He keeps counterattacking. Ronda keeps joining the attack. So the damage should look pretty good. Okay, decrease defense. There we go. Yep, stun goes to Doom Priest, so that's good. So you see, that's the power of Steadfast. Stun goes to the next person because he had Steadfast. It's Void Affinity, so it should go on the first one. Yeah, I think it was just a 3%. I think it was just a 3% and he did not land it. I might e it might even be that another Toxic set could work in this team, you know. But for now, let's see how this one goes. For now, let's see how this one goes. Let's make sure that it goes all the way. Let's make sure that it's... It works. I want to make sure that it works, that it stays into sync first. After that, we can worry about tweaking some builds, you know, later on. Maybe improving some builds. So, stuff that we can look at later. <clears throat> Just pull Valkan and what's your thoughts on him and where could you use him? Orina, I'm early endgame player. I was into Void Mercy pulled for Cardial. Uh, it kind of seems like, yeah, it kind of seems like Valkan's best spot is Orina. Like, he has some quirky stuff going for him. Now, maybe there's some stuff to look at for uh, Hydra as well with him, but I've not played much. I've not played much with him. I mean, I've not played at all, because <laughs> I didn't have him to test him. Phoenix, yo, how's it going, mate? Welcome. This is Ultra Nightmare. This is Ultra Nightmare. You can tell that it's Ultra Nightmare by the value of the War Master. If you see 69,000, that's usually... Uh, Nightmare. Uh, Ultra Nightmare, sorry. The lower you go, the higher the damage is gonna be. 69 noise, exactly. <laughs> it's a 2 key. It might just be a 2 key for now, but this can be pushed by improving the build, you know? I mean, the other option that we could have, like, I don't remember. Uh, are you still here, Hitman? If you're still here, you could actually, you know what, I don't need, I can check in the, over here. If this account has a Farrakhan, maybe Farrakhan might be better, but he's not built. So Farrakhan could be a good option for this team, because he would bring poisons, HP burn, and ally attack, and then everybody else could be lower, like with 70% uh, crit rate. So Farrakhan could also be a good option here. Two keys better than no key, that's true, but you know, I'm, I'm always hoping to get one keys. But yeah, I feel like the next improvement trying to do this better would be Farrakhan the Fat. Farrakhan, even in a Reflex or Relentless maybe as well. He could come in this team and yeah, he would bring the ally attack, he would bring the poisons and the HP burn on the A2. That could pump out uh, some more damage. But maybe Reflex would be better, it depends how the Reflex is. Glute will give you 35 million easily on his own. I mean, I want to see because I'm expecting Ronda to kind of do the same thing. Because we're going on the 2 to 1 ratio, Ronda should dish out a good amount of damage because see, she keeps joining the attacks. She keeps joining the attacks, like, you know, pre pretty often. It's RNG, but, you know, she can be pretty good. I haven't seen her proc the Relentless yet, though. Not seen her proc the Relentless yet. Nothing better than seeing Ronda take five turns in a row. I know, right? <laughs> and see her keep doing damage like crazy. Look at that. Boom. I'm, I'm up again. So we have the weekend. We have the decreased defense. We have the poison. So that's the only thing. The only thing that we're actually mo missing in this team are the, you know, poisons, ally attack, stuff like that. But that's where Ronda's like the always join attack champ. Or as much as possible join attack jump. How do you establish the required speed for all the champions in the calculator if you uh if you want to make the team from scratch without using a speed tool from Devil Jedi? Uh I don't so how do you establish the required speed? Uh honestly I if it means if you mean building a speed tune yourself, it's like depends what you wanna build. Like if it's if it's a normal one-to-one -one ratio team, okay, then you can you can start by thinking what difficulty you fight. As an example, Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss has 
190 speed. So if you want to build a team around that, you can start from being over 190 speed or under. You know, to, to build yourself a team. But it's easier just to take a speed tune that's already out there and just tweak it. That, that's how I do it. I just take a speed tune that's out there and work around it if I want to try some different stuff. Makes it so much easier. Yonel, Yonel, Lionel, salut, salut. Merge, how are you doing? This is a similar comp to mine. I'm using Seeker instead of Deacon, Gnut instead of Ronda, and Farrakhan instead of Doom Priest. Void only combo does 100, 110 million damage. That's true. I wanted to build this because I wanted to make, make it to be an affinity friendly team, and it's the best I could see, like with what we had and what was prepared and built in there. So, <clears throat> so far, this one, this one has the wonky potential. Like I said, it's just obviously it's going to be gearing, gearing or like some tweaking of stuff. Just pull the Jiggle and the Cardial 10x rep. I'm sorry, Hattrick plays. I'm sorry. I need to change my clan boss so I don't have to manual three times and just make a full auto. I mean, uh, again, what I'm doing right now, guys, is a takeover for uh, Ed uh, Edgardo, aka Hitman, in chat. And he he basically purchased a, a account takeover from me doing this clan boss with some coaching. So if anybody's ever interested, I offer takeover services for any area of the game. You know, dungeons, Hydra, Demon Lord, Arena... Doom Tower, whatever you need help for, and for that as a service, just join my Discord. You're gonna see a link in the description, in the pinned comment. Join my Discord, DM me, and let's talk about it. And let's see what we can do for you. See what we can do to help you out. Guessing 65. I'm hoping it goes to that one key, but yeah, it's 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 gonna be tricky. The thing is, the damage with this one is not gonna ramp up as much as the Bat Eater one does, because the Bat Eater one. You have the counter decks for masteries. In this one, you don't. You don't only if you have revenge accessories, if you have uh, retaliation sets, as I, as I tried, you know, like I put on Doom Priest. And those those accessories and those sets work better against Affinity. But still, it's it's a good push towards the one key. It's a good push towards the one key. Could you read my question a little above? Uh, Thomas Barcos, let me see. What damage dealers do you recommend for one king all affinities with decent good but not insane gear in a regular unkillable team like Manitor's Emic? I mean, if you're going for a 2 to 1 ratio team for unkillables in general, if you only have one DPS slot, you're always looking for a DPS champion that brings you decreased defense, weaken, and poisons. So, champions such as Dracomorph, Fane, Anax, uh. Who else is like that? Even Jintoro could work, I guess. And you would have Toxic set on people. There's Aina that can work. As long as you can have... Uh, what's it called? The uh, extra turn mechanic in there. But like, yeah, it's usually... You have to cover the right debuffs. For unkillable teams, you have to cover the right debuffs. Decrease defense, weaken, poisons, HP burn. Stuff like that. that that's what you're looking for. It could be close. Could be maybe get over the line with blessings. Yeah, that's true. Oh, right. Do we have blessings? Oh, yeah. No, uh... Bruh. I forgot to change this. We could have a brimstone. Do I just stop it? You know what, guys? Let's stop it. I want to see the one key. We're stopping it now. We're going again. We're resetting the blessings. Because we want to get one key. And I was like, so we're missing something. I want to get... I want to get Brimstone. That's a good shout. That's a good shout in there. Thank you. I would like to use Anax in your Emic Unkillable team, but I can't write because of his passive. You can, but it depends. His passive makes it tricky. Speeds change, so keep that in mind. Gnut can deal 1 million per A3, and the passive can push Warmaster up to 83k. Put him in Relentless and he will deal 40 million by himself per key easily. I mean, I wanted to try... The thing is like this. I wanted to try and leave Gnut for other areas of the game. I wanted to try with Ronda. Plus, because we have because we brought the increased defense from Doom Priest, you know, Ronda has a spot in the game. So that, that's why I chose to go with her instead of Gnut. Okay, let's go with Brimstone over here. Okay, Brimstone for Helicath. Anything else? Let's see. Deacon has cruelty. That's okay. 
Warcaster, nothing. One, two, Doom Priest. Do we have something for Doom Priest? Where's Doom Priest? Doom Priest, where are you at, girl? Bruh, I don't see. Okay, there she is. So she has nothing. Ronda, nothing. So I guess that's we have Brimstone and Cruelty. That's the best we can for now. Let's go again. Let's try. Come on. Want to see that one key? Can, do you think we can get to one key, guys? What do you think? Really hoping it's going to be because you know what? Brimstone is actually huge. As long as it lands, Brimstone can be huge and a crazy amount of damage. Come on. Phantom Touch on Ronda will help Wonky. Yeah, Phantom Touch on Ronda is going to be the way to go. Boom. 250k straight up. The 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 Brimstone straight from the from, from the beginning. Yeah, we have Accuracy KC because we're using Brimstone on Helicath. And we already need Accuracy for Helicath to land his Weaken on the A1. So that's perfect that we had it on for him. <clears throat> Sovereign tries RSL. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Helicats is pretty decent with Brimstone because of all of his counterattacks. Exactly. Even if it's a one star, he has a pretty high chance to always land it, you know. But usually, f f funny thing is, people that have more multi heads have higher chance to land the Brimstone because it counts uh, per head. So every single head has a chance to land Brimstone. That's why. Sometimes, you know, somebody like Ronda is huge for Brimstone if you don't have other stuff for her because, well, she has three hits or four hits on Affinity. Every time she hits, chance to hit, get a Brimstone. So even if you have a level one, massive. Can I answer my NX Renters question, por favor? Yes, Andrew, let me see. I I'm happy that chat is popping. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Thank you for all being here. It's, it's amazing to see. 160 p i'm not used to having that many people in my chat on stream like i think the the highest amounts i would have was like over 100 or a bit more when i would be raided by uh how hades but yeah it's awesome and thank you all for the support appreciate you don't forget to drop a like while you're at it you know drop a like as it helps push this video to more people out there more people might want to join so let's see andrew's question so would you need anax in a spot where you can use relentless so his passive doesn't mess things up Usually Relentless you can use in the teams where he's uh he does not have a buff that he cannot lose. So if you're using a team that uh, works around increased speed buff, then you cannot use Relentless on him. Otherwise, Relentless can work as long as he goes before the unkillable goes. But because of the extra turn mechanics, sometimes he can get the <clears throat> I think that the timing of the ticks of the turn meter ticks are weird. So the thing that you need to look at is there are certain teams with him that require different speed. So there's a Bat Eater with him, but that requires different speed. So just check on... I even have it on my channel. If you're looking on doing the Bat Eater, which is two, uh, two Man Eater, Seeker, Painkeeper, and DPS, you can see that there are certain speeds of some champions that go different than the normal Bat Eater comp. How many toxic sets are, are too many if you want to land decrease defense weekend and brimstone? I think two, maybe even two could be too much. Like I have one only right now on Deacon, but if he procs, if he procs Master Hexer and extends them too much, the debuff bar could be full. So I feel like one's enough. I feel like I will not go more than one toxic. If you have a champion that also brings poisons in his kit, don't go with that. Everybody got Hydra Clash now? That's a good question. I have not checked. I think it should open. It opened like an hour and a bit ago. <clears throat> Run Gnut in myth hair comp and I hit 80 million plus. So definitely think Gnut takes you to one key in this team if Ronda doesn't. That's true, James. We, we can check that. If we see that Ronda doesn't quite do the job, could always just swap the gear in uh, on Gnut and just bring Gnut in the team and see how it goes. But I have to see because we're short on silver. We killed all the silver. Aizen, thank you for the sub. Appreciate you. Welcome, welcome. Excited to build Amic, Manitor, Gnut, Fane, Frozen, Banshee. How good is Fury set with Amic's 20% damage increase in a team like that? I think that Fury is going to be amazing. 
They recently even buffed Fury, so that's gonna be even better. That's definitely gonna be even better. Malek, you're you're wrong. I, Anax works in unkillable teams. He's just trickier to tune. He's just trickier to tune because he can gain that extra turn when he gets hit. So it works. There's like the Anax Bat Eater. It's just different speeds, different variations. It's just a little bit trickier, like I said, because of, yes, that passive. He's better in block damage. Yes, that's true. He's better in a block damage team because he uh, he doesn't have that passive proc, but that does not mean he does not work in unkillables. It's just, you know, they're a bit different, they're a bit tricky. In which clan am I right now? It's called the OG Cluster. That I'm in Dark Tower Clan. So I think we're 54 on global. <clears throat> Posted a Chris Sloton Discord one uh, for the Mark Speed to replace the Polkar. Okay, let's have a look at it in the meantime. Because I think this one looks fine. This one looks okay. Should be just good. Let's have a look. So let's see what did you post. Trying to build 4C Chris Slow Tune using Mark instead of Sepulcher. Can be currently, I cannot find the speed Mark needs to be to keep her block debuffs increase defense up. Okay, let's have a look. So, uh, so this is the tune, and you want to have Mark in here, okay? That's what you said. Because it's Mark, you would have to just lower the speed straight up. So let me see. Everybody else is slower. So let's go to 150 as an example, okay? 150. Let's see if she's faster. Voila. So 165 on her. But let's see. The thing is, it's not going to be from the beginning. Pretty friendly. This one's the priority. Let's see, when does Chris do his A2? So he, Chris does the A2 over there. So Mark needs to do the A3 before the Chris extend. Like this. So this is how it looks like it, it would uh, work, but you would be... The first stun, you could take it. That's the problem. You could take the first stun, unless it goes on Mark or Chris. Tyrell, Frozen Bench, Skull Crusher not covered for the first stun. Let's see, the team's still working. Yep, still going. So yeah, these three are still not covered. Then when we're talking about speed, a uh, spirit, it goes out of sync. It's not as uh, a bit trickier. Let's see if we make actually slower. 145. Let's see if she goes last in this order. She would have to go like this. So she have to go like this, and A3, and Chris has to extend over here. So this is how it will work. Bang Jack, thank you for the subscription, welcome. <clears throat> you want your clan clash? Now I'm working on the infinity. Uh, yeah, I did, Alphax. I did, we won, we actually won. I got a five star, got a five star. Stone skin ring for barbarians, and I'm not using barbarians in arena, so it's gonna be tricky. But yeah, so this is the team, uh, James. No, James, what? No, let me see who posted this. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Joseph. So it would be something like this, but again, you're you will be taking the first stun, so it depends who the first stun goes to, because after that, it kind of looks. Like, you have increased defense, ally protection, counter-attack. But then it doesn't work here. It falls out of sync there. Hmm. It's a bit tricky playing with Chris because he, he changes the speeds of everyone. The other way we can do it is let's just go to Deadwood's website. Let's just go to Chris. Can we find them? No, okay. One to all ratios, slow tunes. Crisk slow tune, okay. Easier one, just goes Crisk slow tune. Ultra Nightmare. 
And basically see Grizzled Yarl. Okay, Grizzled Yarl. And you place in there Marked. Boom. Let's see. So Marked does the A3 there. And the only one that's not covered by the stun is Kresk. This is the tune. Okay. Let me just share it with you. It's just pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Marked goes in the team and voila. Let me just go over there and... There you go. Okay, let's see. How does this look now? Can I share the calculator file later? Yeah, I can do that now, uh, Edgardo. Let me do that now before I forget. Let me share this one. Copy. Let me po let me DM you on Discord with it. Uh, there you go. There we go. Little Red 5937. Hello, hello. Welcome. How are you doing today? It kind of looks like it has potential to one key, guys. What do you think? It looks like it has the potential to one key. That brimstone might be really clutch. Come on. You're welcome, Edgar. You're welcome. Come on. I want to see one key. This would be awesome. This would be awesome. I want to see that one key in here. It might be really close. It might just be like tweaking, you know, tweaking some stuff, pushing some some more uh, crit damage in the Great Hall. That's going to help some attacks. But in the regular Great Hall, not the Affinity one, because don't want to get speed in there. It's turn 34 right now. So turn 30, 35, 45 million. So can we do another 25 million in 1.5 turns? That's the question. Mm. Might be close. Might be really close. Hmm. Hold on, do you want to play a little bit with your free to play after? I'd love to see the progress here. Uh have my favorite free, uh free to play with Eabad. Like wh what do you mean Andrew? I'm I I've, I've been posting like daily on my free to play series. I'm pushing faction wars in the next month I should be done and I'm going to give the account away. I have five more factions to beat. I think I'm going to be able to beat the Undead today. That's my hope. Might be, I might be able to beat Undead uh, 21. It might be a headache, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to push the Dark Elves a bit. And possibly tomorrow I'm going to beat the Demon Spawn. Can do please cleanse if, uh, even if she's stunned? Yes. Even though she gets the stun, she can still do the cleanse and she still gets the turn. She just loses the cooldown of that A2, which you don't really care about that much. It helps to have the increased attack for these three on the side and herself, but you don't care. Her main job is to cleanse the stun. Take the stun and cleanse it. She cleanses it, boom, she goes. What speed does Helicath have? He is at 253. But we also have Warcaster. It's a it's a two to one ratio team with Deacon. And look at this. We were we were talking earlier about the debuffs, about the toxic sets. See, the debuff bar was almost full with just one toxic on Deacon. As long as you have the toxic on the one that takes lots of turns, you don't need another one. Can Demetha replace Helicath? No, Helicath can only be replaced in this team by other champions that bring a two turn unkillable or block damage. That's on the fourth cooldown. So Helicath could be Roshkar the Tower, Sardnek, uh, Alscorn, Crimson Horn, Emic, Trunkheart. You just have to disable Emic's A2. So in this spot, it has to be somebody who has a two turn block damage slash unkillable on a fourth turn cooldown. Here, I hope all is right. Greetings from Austria. Melon, all's good, mate. How are you doing? All is good. <laughs> How are you today? You mean Emic plus Demetha? Uh, if Demis, I think there is a variation, but it's not a 2 to 1 ratio. It's basically the Roshkar, the Meth, the Roshkar Demetha team. That would work, you know, or like the Helicath Demetha team that work with Emic plus Demetha. It will not be exactly this one, it's a variation of it. If you have Demetha only booked up to 4 turn cooldown on the block damage instead of a 3, you could build the same team. And use her instead of uh, Warcaster. And then everything else can be the same. Dan Bean, thank you for the subscription. 
Also, Bank Jack, I think I missed it earlier. Thank you for the sub. Appreciate you. Welcome, welcome. Warcaster can be replaced by them if I just need to book her 8 3 to 4 turn, not 3 turns. Exactly. Oh, and Venik Deutsch, odd one net. I only speak. Ich only spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. That's is alles ich kann sagen. That's all I can say. I, I know a little bit, but not too much. I haven't practiced since I was a kid. What speed does Helicaf need to be so they can block the damage in the group? In this team, Adrian, Helicaf is 253 speed. Perfect, like it. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. It's going to be so close. It's going to be so close. So we're basically just almost there. Maxing out some more stuff. Upgrading big the Great Hall, and this team should get you to the one key. This team should get you to the one key, uh, Edgardo. With Phantom Touch, yes, with some Phantom Touch in there, it can be one key on some other people. Hello, new fan here. Can you give some tips regarding Faction Wars? How can I finish it? I've played for one year, but I still can beat the end bosses. I said, the best advice I can give you is go, go on my channel. Go to my playlist and check my free-to-play series. I'm just doing that now. I'm pushing Faction Wars on my free-to-play and I'm showing every single Faction War that I beat. I'm showing the teams that I used. I give other advice, other options like give tips and tricks. So that's that's the best I, I can tell you. Go check those out because they're definitely going to be more relatable from the free-to-play perspective than the main account. Does Geo work with Unkillable instead of block damage with his speed tune? Uh, I mean, Geo works in this team, yes. It's just, he Geo only brings you... I guess he could do a ton of damage with Unkillable. He could do a ton of damage because it's passive. Look at this! We're almost there. No! Almost there. <sighs> yeah, yeah, it's not quite there. Not quite. Almost, though. It's like 3, mil, three million away. That's not that bad. 67.17 so this is funny look at the power of toxic deacon 12 million doom priest 9.2 ronda 22 million almost warcaster 6 million helicast 17.8 so yeah it's it's almost there it is almost there you know what should we just do this for the sake of testing hmm what do you think, Edgardo? I could try and see. I just need to sell some stuff for uh, for some silver, if we have some. Let me see. Anything we can sell from here? Nope. Anything from here? Definitely don't want to keep these. Don't want to keep this. Don't want to keep this. Not that. Not this. Can I sell some stuff to try and put Gnut in there? I'm going to try Gnut in the same year. Are you, okay for, are you okay for me to do that? Brogni does work for some reason, Geo does not. It's I mean, they both work. It's just Geo does more damage the more he receives, because he reflects the damage itself and has a chance to proc. Whereas Brogni only has a chance to proc, right? I think he doesn't reflect damage. But they both work, it's just he does less damage and block damage. Yes, sir. Okay, let's have a look. So let me see. Let me just sell a few of these things. That one could be reworked. That run this is bad. This one, if it doesn't roll speed. Okay, double speed. Keep it. Might need to sell some accessories. Let's try. Gnut. I think Gnut is booked. Yes. Yes, Gnut is booked. So he's booked. He has uh, masteries. That's okay. So let's see. Let's see if I just put those. Can I get into the, that speed? It's going to be trickier though. Because he needs accuracy as well. So if I just try to straight swap. Do I get close to that damage or not? 229. No. Okay. Let's let's just try and use it on the optimizer. Let me close some of these things. Because I have too many. Uh, this one over here. Okay. So let me live refresh. Let's go Gnut. Let's see damage. 230, 250, and Relentless. And I guess let me take from everyone, because I'm going to need to unlock 
I'm gonna need to unlock Ronda anyway. Okay, unlocked Ronda. Now I can remove this. Live refresh. Let's see. Not a bad guess with 2 million shy. Geo doesn't work with block damage, but he's not quite as good. Does work, he's not quite as good. He's in a very... Yeah, in unkillable or regular damage, like killable comp, he's definitely better. Okay, let's see. So, 3.7k, 140. This is the thing, though. In Relentless, with accuracy, it's tricky to get him a... Uh... Well, is 146 crit damage going to be enough? That's my question. I mean, I guess it's worth a shot. We need to glyph some speedo. You're using your Chenaimer, Brogni, Helicad, Marty, Save, and Harima. Nice. Okay, so, uh... First things first. Let me have a look, because... I saw something interesting. This one. Oh god, give me speed. Okay, no speed, perfect. So, because it didn't give me speed, I can do the rigger and just get the three pieces. It might be... Might be tricky. It's not enough crit damage, but... Hopefully it's gonna be... Hopefully it's gonna be good enough. It's gonna depend a little bit on his uh, relentless procs as well, so... That's gonna be tricky. Speed, crit rate. Okay, so... Wait a second. Oh yeah, and the speed boot. And this one. So, he's 250. Okay. I just need to glyph speed. You shouldn't need accuracy either. Helicat brings the weekend. If he's not the clan boss only. That's true. We could drop the accuracy because if he's gonna work, you know what? If you're gonna use him for dungeons, you can put him in the lead. So even if he has like 100 accuracy or like 120 accuracy from random stuff, with his lead, that could be better. So let's just drop the accuracy. Good point, good point. See, this is why it's fun. This is why I like to do uh, sometimes the takeovers with chat because, you know, chat throws some ideas as well. Yeah, we do have, uh, we do have uh, the weekend from Helicast. So we still have the 150. This is the problem though, look at this. We don't need an attack percent chest, we need a defense percent chest for them. Defense percent chest with speed, that's what we're looking for. Marius Haas, thank you for the subscription, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So we need defense percent with speed. And like speed and crit rate maybe. Like this. Okay, speed and crit rate. Okay, so we have the option. One more speed. Okay, we got the double speed there. Uh, I need to I need to cleanse some of this because we're we, we need silver. <laughs> we need silver for trying to do this. So let me see. Any five star rare or like some five star we could sell. Honestly, five star stuff. I'll just sell some of this because you farm better. Okay, six star rare. Uh, let me just sell a couple of stuff. You know what? The stuff that's really bad. Let's start like this. Make it a bit easy. So attack. Yep, don't care. I mean, I'm going to leave stuff that's already rolled, but... Don't really care about attack. Amulets. They're not the best. Okay, some like that. Then again, defense. Defense are not... Are not the most important one. They're one of the least important. Just sell some stuff just to get some silver. Okay. Okay, there we go. DC, thank you for the subscription. Welcome, welcome. Lower crit damage might be okay with decreased defense a week and about 200% should do. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look again. Preparing a defense percent chest, because that we don't have. Defense percent chest with speed. Hopefully 6 star. Oh, something like this. Something like this, if I can get some speed or crit damage. One more speed. Speed and crit damage, okay, so that's options. That's what that is, that is options. More speed on this one. Triple, 
Fuck yeah, triple. <laughs> we'll take it. This is an option. Prafulika Tony. Thank you for the sub. Welcome. Thank you everybody for the support. Appreciate you. Welcome, welcome to the channel. I mean, it's the most common two need to be picky with which ones to keep. That's true. I mean, attack are pretty much useless and defense are extremely rare that are used. There's, you'd rather have HP when you go for amulets or crit damage instead of defense, you know? Okay, let's live refresh. Let's check again. Come on. I think it might give us the defense percent chest and rent as we just rolled. Let's see. 158 still. 255. Okay, 255 might work because it's the exact same speed. Yeah, but why does it give me exact percent chest though? Bruh. You know what? Let me go for damage highest overall because he's not only about his A3. This one went lower now. Yeah, it went for the defense percent. Defense percent. So this one looks... It's 146. It's pretty low, but... I guess we could still try because we have the decreased defense from him. We have the weakened. I mean, the decreased defense from his A3. Does that work, though? Does anybody know? I never thought about it. Does this work if you don't have accuracy on him that's a good question it's an interesting one cc hacks sometimes andrew sometimes <laughs> get the ghost of the decade subs and i'm uh and your hydra clan boss team build exactly andrew you might be the lucky one so if you don't know what andrew means guys uh i have a video that's basically uh, giveaway video where I give away a clan boss, a demon lord clan boss and a hydro ta uh, takeover giveaway as soon as I hit 10,000 subscribers so if you go and search through my through my uh, recent videos I think it posted like last week it's called, it says on it like takeover giveaway and you can watch it see how you can enter and as soon as I hit 10,000 subs I'm doing the giveaway, I'm picking two winners for that you don't need accuracy for his A3, that's good so let's see, let's go with the two, this one, because it's 253. Okay, let's go with this one. I really hope to see a one key damage. I really hope to see one key damage. That's the goal, right? That's the goal. And if we do it, like I said, if we use him for dungeons, put him in the lead, then he should have good enough accuracy for, not for all of it, but for most levels of uh, dungeons. When you get to like the end, of hard dungeons, it's not enough because you need a 350. But 150 plus the 80, that's 230. Should get you to like stage 4 or 5 maybe of hard. Okay, defense percent from Tatura. I think it's Avenging, yep. And speed from Ronda. With crit rate, accuracy, and double defenses. And then the other banner. Defense banner with speed. <clears throat> This one. Yep, definitely the best that we have. Okay. Let's see, I need to get him. It doesn't work with him at 253. Let's go with Gnut. Okay, so again, he cannot work at 253. Because if he procs the Relentless after this, it doesn't work. But at 254, it works. So I just need to glyph one speed on him. Just need to glyph one speed on him. Check the calculated speed works. Exactly, exactly. So that, that's what I just said. So he needs to get one speed glyph. So he does not get out of tune because of the Relentless. Can you still use Gnut in other parts of the game? So Edgardo, if you use Gnut for his... Uh, Termiter decrease on the A1, you just need to make sure if it's in dungeons, you use him as lead, okay? Use him as lead because he gains the extra AT accuracy. If you use him in Doom Tower, maybe have somebody like, I don't know, somebody else that brings you the accuracy lead, or you use an increased accuracy champion alongside such as Razzlevarg, then he can work. It's just currently, he, he will not be doing... Uh, he cannot do the debuffs without the extra accuracy as reliable. It's... Only 168. But like I said, if you use the right 
champions alongside him should be pretty good. Okay, though, let's let's have a look. So let me see. Gnut 254. Okay, actually, let me. I did not put Lord of Steel. Okay, so works with Lord of Steel. I have no speed sets on him. No, we're fine. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again. Let's see. Can we get a one key? Can we get that one key? I think I want to open with this and then prioritize the A3. So I have the counter attack for the first AOE. So even though... What's it called? Even though we do, might not land this and we want to do more multi-hits, <clears throat> having a counter attack can help because he gets hit, he counter attacks more. It's going to be slower because he's going to keep counter attacking, but... As long as it's a one key, that's what all that matters. Yeah, if you if you're gonna if you can glyph 20 30 accuracy, you should be fine. Exactly. Colin Cook, thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Mm. So look at that. We do 600,000. So some, but this is just the beginning. So 600,000 for the start. After we get that defense maxed from his A3. We're gonna see what the damage is capped at. Sitting on a rocket, wish you uh, that I would be a wonky. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we're, we're, I know. Want to see the wonky now, right? Okay, come on, brimstone. I wanted a brimstone from him, but it's fine. We're gonna land next time. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Okay, the damage is going higher. That's good. I think this one falls into sink at like turn six. All is good. All is good. Come on. Oof, okay, we're getting better. Getting closer to that 300k. Closer to that 300k per pop, which is like almost a million. So, definitely worth it. From 600,000 at the beginning to to the damage, that's definitely worth it. Yeah, that I do have a feeling like you guys are right. It's definitely going to be a wonky with Gnut. Because the other thing that Gnut does is check that wa uh, Warmaster damage in Giant Slayer. Come on, let's proc one. Come on. Bruh, proc one. 86,000. Because of his A3, decreases the, decreasing the defense, all the Warmaster procs go up as well. So from 69,000 that they used to be, it's 86,000 now per Warmaster Giant Slayer proc. Oh my god. Yep, it's it's definitely Gnut's the way. Gnut is definitely the way to go. Like, I don't even need to run this anymore. I can already... I already know there's gonna be a wonky. I already know there's gonna be a wonky. Which is good. Look at that damage. Oof. Oof. So nice to see. It's so nice to see. When you are on Twitch Live, I got your free Prime sub ready. I give it to you from now on. You deserve it. Thank you, Melon. Uh, next uh, time, it should be Friday. So Friday should be live or stream on, on Twitch. I think I'm still going to stream there for a little bit. And then like I will do the transition maybe completely here. But Friday from 8, uh, 8 p.m. UTC, right? 8 p.m. UTC, 4 p.m. EST. I should be live on Twitch. Do you next? <laughs> the buds. The buds. I'm uh, I'm gonna be finishing with this for today, but like I said, if anybody's interested in takeovers, I do that as a paid service. Join my Discord. You can see there my, my takeovers channel. I, I talk there about what I require, what I offer. I will rate my takeover as well, like, you know, so you can see other people that have had takeovers done by me, because you know what? I, I want people to have the assurance that, you know, I'm not trying to scam people. So you can always check that. Yep, exactly, uh, Melon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 euro. Yes. That one, 8. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot what 8 was. The damage is already... 
It's already blowing away compared to the other one. I don't think we were at this point at stage 12, 13. Wish I had the money for takeover. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I, honestly, I wish I had the time to do takeovers for free for everybody. It's like, you know, I do get sometimes people asking like, oh, don't you do free takeover? Don't you do this? If I had the time and if I could afford it, I would always do it for free. This is my full-time job. This is how I earn a living. You know, I'm trying to... I'm building a family. I'm trying to eat, so... I have to, you know, I have to do that. I have, to, I have to do this, like, to top up my funds. I'm not earning as much from YouTube or Twitch by their own to be able to offer, you know, weekly or daily free takeovers. I wish I could, but it's just, you know, man's gotta eat. <laughs> debuff bar is full. One toxic set on Deacon and debuff bar is full. <clears throat> How does Emic Taunt work on Clan Boss? If he has the Taunt up... When the clan boss needs to take the stun, the stun will always go on Emic. That's how taunt works in clan boss. Whoever does taunt, when the boss comes to his single target hit, not his AoEs, the stun, the, the stun will always go on the, on the person that has taunt. Easy one key gonna be 10, 15 million over. Yeah, definitely, and I think it's gonna be worth it. I think this is gonna be worth it to for this Edgardo for now, because you know what? One key, bro. It's one key. Your takeovers are worth uh, paying for, though. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I have, I have good reviews. That's all I'm going to say. If you check my Discord, I have good reviews. <laughs> Damage is looking good. It'll be good. Yeah, that's true. It might be a lot faster because... Uh, I mean, to be fair, as long as we do the one key the first time... That's it, because after that he's going to do instant key. It's just he has not done the one kill trimer damage yet. So as soon as we do this once, next time just clicks it and it's auto complete. Might rebuild your GNU for clan bar just so you can unlock the quick battle. It's definitely worth it. Your missile with Anax is only... How are you only doing 68 million on the missile with Anax sound waves? Do you... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this. First things first, sound waves. If you're using the A2 and the A3 for Fushan, you have to disable the A2. A3, I would tell you to remove the A3 as well, but maybe you want more consistent decreased defense because Anax does not keep it up all the time. But he does, A2 is disabled. Okay, okay. It should be enough. Yeah, like missile, it's, it might just be the gear. It might just be the gear sound waves. Like, like that, the missile should do a ton of damage with Anax. Anax is almost on par with Dracomorph. When it comes to like damage in, in comps like that. Gear issue. Yeah, that, that might be the case. I don't think you need Aeris in Toxic. Because you go 2-1. Two to one, You have enough poisons from Anax. Look at that damage though. Ooh. Trying to build a 1 key yourself. So would like to see the needed stats or at least a ballpark. Okay. If it hits the wonky, can you show the stats of the champs after maybe just to this or miss that part if already dead? Uh, Ranesh, you can always just... I mean, I can, I can show it again because like you would have to scroll through the whole of it. But you can always scroll back to the video. I can show at the end like the, the champions and the stats a bit for sure. Martha2505, thank you for the sub. Welcome. Can you show Doom Priest build after run? Mine is not even close to damage you do here. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will show you. For, look at that. I just realized, love that you said that. 100k pop from Doom Priest's A1. <laughs> Can't have her in Toxic, don't have the stats in Toxic. Then, yeah, it's, it's not worth it anyway. Did use leftover gear for Fushan and Anax? That's probably why. Honestly, you should try and get good builds, especially for Anax. Anax can put up 40 million on his own in that team. He can easily put up like 40 million. Yeah, this is a Doom Priest on steroids. That's true. <laughs> this Doom Priest is on steroids. <clears throat> Will you post that in response? What do, what do you mean, Joseph? Okay, let me just share this with... Uh, with Hitman. And you go the updated one.
Joseph, I don't know what you mean. Like, would you post response in Discord, please? I posted in a chat earlier. The not the four three one, but I posted the variation with. Uh, what's the name? Just the one to one ratio team. Yes, you can do this. No, damn it. I think was it this one? Let me see. Yep. Okay, uh, yeah, there you go. I post it in that Discord again now. Joseph. <clears throat> Diamond Gentleman count looks good. Definitely. It's, we're, we're fine. This is easily one key. We're definitely fine. Thank you, man. Much appreciated. We'll otherwise just watch back the VAR later. No problem. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to show that because it's easier. I don't have a spot where I just stop and show the stats. I just show while I'm building them. So I could show them a little bit at the end, like the speeds and the sets. If you can share the speed uh, calculator with people here. Yeah, I can, I can do that as well. I think what Joseph was interested was the... What's it called? Was the one that he asked about the Krisk. So this is the one that we're doing right now. Gnut, Deacon, forever. Let's call it. Even though, you know what? I actually even have a video on, on this. Uh, I have a video on this team re that I recently posted anyway. On my channel. So if people are interested, it's called one kill time easier than for, than ever. It's G Gnut Deacon Forever. So if you if you don't uh, if you haven't been here and don't want to watch the whole live stream, then that's that's the link to the YouTube video. That's basically this team with uh, with a little bit of variation. But this one's easier. If you have Doom Priest for the clans, this one's easier because it's a friendly friendly. The other one's a little bit tricky with. Uh, Stun targeting with like what affinity you face. Doom Priest just makes it 10 times easier. This one, if you have this team, you have Doom Priest, you're good to go. Should I book my Artek or wait to see if Wukong is worth it? I would wait for Wukong for now, Fadmir. If you if you have not booked your Artek yet, just wait for the next one. Artek is definitely worth booking 100%. Just depends. You have other HP burner, you have other HP burn exploders. What do you need? Do I do account takeovers for everyone? Ashley Owens, I do account takeovers as a paid service for everyone. Like whoever's interested, but it's a paid service. I don't have the time, unfortunately, to do it for free anymore. I used to do them a lot, but it's my full-time job and I have to earn a living somehow as Twitch and YouTube does. I'm not that big of a creator to earn enough, so I do them as, as paid services. But I also have a giveaway going on right now for a clan boss, for a demon lord and a hydra takeover. It's on my channel, It's uh, if you just scroll through my channel and my recent videos, you can enter and as, as soon as I hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, I will be doing that giveaway and I will pick two winners, one for a Demon Lord takeover and one for a Hydro takeover. How are you doing brother? Finally was able to catch you live. Fredo, how's it going? Welcome bro. Appreciate your support Fredo. See you in my comments all the time. Appreciate you. Thought I'd never say it, but my free-to-play account is getting too many Legos to keep up with books. I know, Blue Guaps. That's my free-to-play account. <laughs> can you swap Ragni for Doom Priest? You can, but it's a bit tricky. If you swap Ragni for Doom Priest, Titanic MVP, then check my link that I posted above. Follow the, the instruction of that video, but keep in mind affinities. As stun targeting is going to be tricky on affinities, you need different presets and all that. Oh my god, we're not even at turn 40 we're almost one king. Jesus, Gnut's a monster. Definitely worth the try. It's definitely worth... Was worth it for us to try. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Marked Chris, Narman to others. Yes, you need that. See if you can get under ally protection or something. Another increased defense. Healing in their leech. Joseph, so there's options. You have been watching for more than two hours. Appreciate you, Andrew. It's been more than two hours. I thought I was going to finish this a bit, uh, you know, like in an hour, an hour and a half max. But I mean, we were kind of done. But honestly, it was worth it to try it again with Gnut. Because now Hitman, aka Gardo, has a one kill Trinimer team. From tomorrow, you can just click Insta complete. Job done. Blogging should block the debuffs. True, but on Affinity... It's a problem of when does it fall into sync? Who gets the stun first? That's you need to be careful about Titanic. I built this team, the team with Brogni, just used Tatur instead of Brogni. 
and it's different. It's tricky. It's tricky because the block debuffs doesn't perfectly boom. Turn one go before the debuff or before the stun. It depends what affinity you face. He might block it, but the the like the the first debuff from the AOEs from the second AOE, but you might not block the stun because of how it goes into rotation early on. And then the stun might go on the wrong person and the team falls out of sync. You need to be really careful care careful with the Deacon slash Batman Forever teams. Really careful about affinities and champions. <coughs> yep, turn 41, one key. Job done, easy clap. Job done, easy clap. I hope you're happy with the result, Edgardo. <clears throat> I'm definitely happy with the result. I'm definitely happy with the result. Using a note with a Draco and a 2 DPS comp, you think it's worth swapping out Draco by building a Farrakhan currently hitting 2 key? 54 million, not sure whether the ally attack with extra Warmaster would be better. I'm not sure you're gonna get more damage, because it depends who else you have. Because Draco brings you decrease defense, weaken, and poisons. I'm guessing Groot can bring you back up decrease defense and counter attack on himself. If you have somebody else with a decrease defense, you could try that, but... I'm not sure I would lock Gnut just for that, you know? Draco is amazing. Draco is a beast for for the for the clan boss. And the, the thing is, even if you get an ally attack with him, he maybe do a, does a little bit more giant slayer procs, but the highest damage that he brings is from this A3. So he does not he does not does not do an ally attack with that, you know. Yeah, Gnut has a weakened too. Gnut has a weakened too, but Draco also brings tons of poison, so. It might just be that you need to try and get a 2 to 1 ratio team, Colin. That that might be what, what your goal is to try and get a 2 to 1 ratio team. Roscoe5000, thank you for the subscribe. Appreciate you, welcome. You're happy, thanks, you're welcome. <laughs> Look at this damage though, damn. Like with Ronda, we, we got close. We got close to one key, and with, with Gnut, we're just blowing it out of the park. Should I book my art tech or wait? I already answered earlier, Fatmir, so I would say wait to see what Wukong, what Wukong's kit is going to be. But at the same time, depends what you need on your account. Do you need art tech as for the HP burn, HP burn activations? But I would still say wait for Wukong and then and then decide. Yeah, Gnut's not even uh, awakened. I mean, Phantom Touch would not do as crazy damage for him. Honestly, because the, the problem with Phantom Touch is it scales off of attack. That's that's weird. So if you have a defensive nuker such as him, you don't benefit as much. You would get a little bit of extra damage, but nothing too crazy. Can you replace Doom Priest with Battle Khazar for Ultra Nightmare? For this team specifically, you could, but the problem is you it would not be affinity friendly. In a sense of... Battle Khazar does the cleanse every three turns. Doom Priest does it every time she gets a turn. So Battle Khazar would not work the same as Doom Priest. Like he could come in the team and take the stun and do some other stuff, but he's not gonna make you affinity friendly same as Doom Priest. 8725. Look at Gnu, 36.6, bruh. He's almost double. <laughs> he almost did double the damage the Ronda did. Wow, just wow. Maybe a manager still works for block debuffs. It doesn't work like that, Ranesh, because the way this team works is they uh, they are alternating when they're doing the block damage. So it's not like Warcaster always blocks the second day we or the stun. No, it's one time Warcaster, one time Helicath. So because they're alternating, it's not going to be affinity friendly. That's why this team is a little bit different and trickier. Yep. Awesome job, thank you. So let's have a quick look at the builds because some people asked in chat. So first things first, Helicath. Just random whatever pieces of gear. Speed, damage, the accuracy to land his debuffs. And these are the masteries on Helicast. Obviously War Master, because that, that's what you need. Congrats on the one key team. Thank you, Christopher. It's definitely amazing. Yeah, to Hanrak or Dome Priest, though, that's the other variation. You can use to Hanrak instead. Then this is Gnut, and these are Gnut's masteries. Starting with the Masteries, he's the Relentless, and not even max this one yet. <clears throat> These are his stats. Not the craziest, as you can see, crit damage, but he still did the job. He's just amazing. 
Vlad the Little Messani helped me clear fractional studio on Vlad is a beast. Vlad is amazing, that's true. Accuracy a bit low is because in this team we don't care about his weaken. We're using the weaken from Helicast, so that one doesn't matter. If you use him in dungeons, even with this low accuracy, put him in the lead, you're gonna have 240 accuracy and you're good to go. Then we have Deacon. Deacon is in the toxic because in this team he's better to be in the toxic as he attacks more often. Doom Priest has a turn when she doesn't do it. If you could get uh, Warcaster to be in the Toxic, that would be better because he's really fast. So you're not going to be able to pump the craziest damage. But because we couldn't, it's Deacon, Toxic plus Cruel. These are the Deacon stats. <clears throat> and Deacon Master is again War Master. You kind of want to get Master Hexer in here specifically. Because you want a chance to extend those Toxics, you know, that you place, the, the poisons that you place from the Toxic set, so you can get close to filling the debuff bar, which is, you know, more damage. Then Warcaster and his Masteries. And this is his build, like mostly speed and hitting the stats. You need him to be pretty fast, and then, you know, some crit damage and some attack. Could have been better, could have been worse, but it did the job. And then Doom Priest. In one retaliation and then some random pieces. Speed, good crit damage, good attack. So this is why the Doom Priest was hitting for 100k a pop with increased attack. 3.2k attack, 200 crit damage. So, yep. Doom Priest is a beast. And obviously, again, Doom Priest with War Master. <clears throat> so, yeah, this was the team. This was the team. This was the Ultra Nightmare 1 key. Deacon Forever for Edgardo. And yeah, it was definitely fun to build and I'm happy that managed to get it to a one key. I was not sure we were I was going to be able to do it because, like I said, the gear was not quite there. But we did it. We did it, guys. So yeah, I think we're going to leave it at here for today. Hitman, I'm going to pass you back the account. Uh, For now, you can jump back in. And guys, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Hope you had fun. Appreciate all the subs. Appreciate all the love, the support. I'll be back, but not on YouTube. I will stream on Twitch on Friday. Unless I change my mind, I'm going to announce in the Discord. But yeah, I'll be back on Friday streaming. Up until then, keep an eye out on my YouTube. I'm, you know, trying to do daily content. Trying to be as active as I can. Having fun and all that. And yeah, appreciate all of you. Hope you had fun. Thanks for dropping by. And I'm going to see you all in the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye, guys.